I'm reasonably confident of the port work. You can double check the timing, of course, double, triple check and make sure that your openings are good and things are squared off appropriately. So my exhaust ended up at about 101, which is totally fine. The intake is 78, 79, also fine. Don't need to worry about that, and the transfers are where they are. Difficult to see them with this method. So the intake is much more square. The exhaust is much more square. Nice crisp openings, and it'll be fine. Uh, you'll be have a nice, nice good pop. I'm gonna clean this with brake cleaner. I'm gonna clean this surface too. Let's get the piston properly installed. Here are the circlips. Now, one thing about these circlips is that the ears are a little too long. So we're gonna grind it off a little bit. Hot tip, don't grind the air off over your crankcase. Uh, in, addition, in addition to the shavings, if the piece gets lost, it might be in there, and then you're sunk. So don't do that. That's about fine right there. Now the reason for that is that that ear has a significant amount of momentum at 13,000 RPM. So as it's going up and down and up and down and up and down, uh, it is entirely possible however unlikely, but entirely possible that that can compress or elongate or compress enough suddenly to pop out. So, superstition, who knows? Everybody's heard that these have had trouble so with that, so that's why we do this. We don't need our timing wheel any longer, so let's get rid of that. These wrist pins are actually a little on the loose side, which is really not the best, so you may consider upgrading this to a meteor piston. So remember, the arrow points to the exhaust side. So I put the PTO side in first because it's the hardest to do. Get my thumb like that. Now if you push and you gouge yourself, that's obviously gonna be bad, so don't do that. Now that is a channel that is deep down in there. I don't know how you'd ever get that back out. I like to have the remainder of the ear be down, or up or down, but preferably for me down. And it's got to rotate freely in here. So we have our wrist pin bearing. Again, a nice upgrade is to upgrade this to an OEM unit. I put a little bit of WD-40 on there, not much. Put the piston in the correct direction. Wrist pin goes in. Good. Now we have the tricky one to do. I use this thumb as a fingernail to push it around, to keep it down, rather. And now it's in. Flick. 
great. That was not too bad. And it's in the groove. Just want to make sure it goes all the way around. Comes down. It's facing down. So now you're good. Before we forget, let's put our gasket down. The bump here goes down, as best I can tell. Next is rings. These are not necessarily easy, but shouldn't be that difficult either. There is an up and down. Um, there are positioning pins, so you have to make sure that they are not upside down. This one happens to be a double ring piston. Last thing before I put this down, I do want to put the intake boot on it. So if you do decide to grind in here and match the boat, you can do that. Um, I just make sure that the metal doesn't interfere and that it doesn't look like it's going to puddle anywhere. Let's do a little bit of Loctite on this. You don't have to, but you can. Bring this all the way out. Now sometimes you can stick this on here and put it on, sometimes you can't. So, I'll stick this on after. Boot goes on. Little tab goes down, straight down. Now you put the ring on. I like to put the uh, screw underneath. This one you may not even be able to get on that way. May have to dismantle it. Let's see. There, found it. And we can look at the bolts that go here, the carburetor bolts, and make sure that this is aligned properly. The carburetor bolts are effectively flat or parallel. So, just like that, not tilted one way or another. Alright, so let's finish this off here. Probably tight enough. Tight. A little bit of blue Loctite on here just because. Don't want it backing off. So I'm not going to use any sealer on this base gasket. I'm going to kind of leave it as is. Um, they're single use base gaskets, so I get one shot at this. Also, a little bit of blue Loctite. on the threads. Make sure your circ clips are in, which they are. And then getting the rings is not super easy if you're doing it by hand. What makes this harder is that I, I took most of the bevel off the cylinder itself. That helps the rings kind of slip in. I usually get one side down. I 
course, you can use ring compressors here too. Oh, there's one. Usually, the first one's kind of the easy one. And what I could have done to the cylinder is actually add that bevel back. But there's really no need. Okay. Make sure the cylinder's straight. Get our cylinder head bolts, M5 by 25 for cylinder. Now, these are all kind of through hole bolts, so I don't think I'm going to need to worry about bottoming out. Um, but on other chainsaws, you do have to worry about bottoming these silly bolts out. I like to get a couple of them started just to make sure the whole thing is properly lined up and down. And just work your bolts down. One, two, three, four. Your cylinder head is down. Double check. One, two. Three, four. It's tight, but there's no clearance issues. I'm going to guess that this impulse line goes here, but, and then that it faces upwards kind of. But I don't know why it's shaped that funny way. It doesn't seem to fit. I'll try to check on that later. So before we put the tank on, let's put some AV mounts on. AV mounts can go in with grease. Small AV mount over here. Click. Okay. That was easy. I think there's a rubber AV mount that probably goes here. I wonder if that's the same issue I had with the 360 that I just put together. It does it just doesn't click in. It's very difficult. So the husky mounts. The original ones come like this, so they have this tip, you just stick it through there and you grab it and you pull and it just pops right through. Um, this one is the steel mount here and it just, it won't go through. I just don't know how you could possibly get it through. So one option is to take the, the, an old husky mount, pop it through because it just pops, but it's a little floppy. So then take a piece of copper wire run it or hook it around it and twist it and that way it stays in there. Let me try one other way. I tried the string method with floss. Wrap the, the string around it and pull. Uh, I'm gonna try it here with something heavier, a heavier piece of string. hurt myself. That might actually work. It's working. It's very slow and it looks like you could really hurt yourself. So. color me exceptionally unhappy with how this has been going. Yeah, 
Okay, that's working. It's coming through. string but you need something heavier than floss okay any other AV mounts none that I see the oiler let's get this in filter goes on I like grease just slips on right nice and then for this I'm gonna use a little bit of 1184 probably don't have to but I will Straight in. It just sits down just like this. That's that. So I'm looking at the oiler and wanting to do that, but the thing to do before the oiler is to do this bushing. Now, this and the 372 are nearly identical designs, as far as I can see. Uh, this one's a little bit different shape, but the idea is that there's still a bushing. And the bushing goes over the crankshaft, and on the 372 design, there's actually an O-ring that goes on here that seals this against the bearing um, and all that stuff. But here... Uh, there is no o-ring. Not included. And I know that there is, uh, as far as I can tell, it's not in any of the parts lists. So, um, basically it doesn't exist. Great. So what do you do? I'm not really trusting that it's going to seal well enough. So the simplest thing to do is to take just a little bit of anaerobic sealer and go around the crank. Doesn't need much. Again, more is not better. Go around the crank. But before you put this on, might as well use the Coke can trick. So you get a piece of Coke can. Now, what I have done is in other videos, I have illustrated this significantly better. So um, feel free to check that out. I've got a 394 XP video that goes into significantly more detail on this particular trick. But the idea is that you want... There's a lip, and if you cause the seal to invert, that's going to be bad. You don't want to do that. So here we should be able to use the Coke can trick. Put that around, and then put that on. Yeah. And everybody's mileage is going to vary on this, but once you have the Coke can on, then you can gently slide this seal down, all the way down and in. Just a screwdriver just to push on it. There. Now you remove, gently remove the Coke can. and then there's no chance of that seal having inverted. And that anaerobic will seal 
that bushing up against the crank. So the bushing is sealed to the crank and the bushing is also on the outside is sealed to the seal. You're good. Now you've got a seal. Now on the 372, there's also a washer here. In the kit, I don't see a washer. I'm going to go check the parts list and see if there is one. So according to the parts list, there is no washer. Let's put the uh, oiler down. Put a little bit of anaerobic sealer over here on the rubber. And then I want a little bit of blue Loctite on these screws. And a little bit of 1184 here. Now here you probably don't need it, but again, being silly. Okay, a little bit of 1184 there. Okay. So now, let's see, do we put that in first? Maybe, then that second. Thing all kind of seats at once. It's weird. And this rubber piece has got to sit just right as well. Two T27 Torx screws, short ones, they look like 12 millimeter. tight and sitting flush all the way around. Double check. Good. This one needed a little jockeying to get it just into the right spot. And it's pretty picky because it sits in there with the main bearing. That it, You need a tiny screwdriver to get in there for that oiler. I set the oiler midway. I happen to have the worm gear right here. A little grease. While we're over here, we'll do the chain break. Scratch that, let's do the chain tensioner. O-ring. This gets packed in grease. Get the pinion gear. Put these two pieces together. Left hand thread. This black piece clicks onto here. seats. Again, packed in grease. This little metal piece goes down like that and then flat blade. This holds that metal retainer down. white piece goes down effectively loosen this and bring it back over this white piece because then it retains that the bar plate will retain it too Bar nuts and studs. Again, I like grease. The longer end goes in. And there is a trick to tightening these. 
you put them in basically hand tight best you can. Then you take your bar nuts and these are three quarters inch or 19 millimeter, doesn't matter. So you take two of them and you tighten, you hold the lower because you don't want it too tight. And then you, you, so you tighten one against the other and then you can tighten this down. So then you undo the upper and both of them should come right off. Repeat for the second one. Tighten the upper against the lower. Use the upper to tighten. Grab the lower, reverse them. Made in the shade. Might as well at this point put your flippy cap in. That way there's no junk getting in there. Same with the fuel tank. Would be wise to do this earlier in the build. There's a little ball that goes into a slot. Pull up to seat it. Flippy cap goes on. Wonder. I think we can get the tank on. It's basically three things that have to happen at the same time here with this tank. One, the electrical lines it looks like they need to come through. Having a couple of pointy nose pliers or hemostats would be good for this. two electrical lines are through. We're going to go back to our string. We're going to wrap our string around the boot a couple of times here. Actually, first, let's put it through the hole. One of the ends goes through the hole. I'm going to clip it here. So we don't lose that end. And then you wrap it around your boot. and then back through the hole. Just making sure the impulse line's out of the way. You push the boot up against the hole pretty good, and you pull the string. I, I wrap the string a couple times around one of the bar studs, the carb studs here. You pull the string, and the rubber boot, comes right through. It takes a little bit of practice to get that exactly right, but it's very doable. Small string, nylon string is good. Um, also the impulse line here. Impulse line gets grabbed and work gentle. And it's through. That's that. So fuel, impulse, boot. Let's put our AV screws in.